Another short project that came to mind only recently was to do with uh, setting up my boring bars in the tool post. Generally I use or have used just a piece of prepared inch square. This is 3 8 bore. That's another one, 3 8 bore. This one has a set screw. This one has a slitting cut so it tightens down and clamps the piece and this is, I think this was bought as a complete unit which again has a slitting saw cut this is actually about 14 millimeter but it's got a means to put in a little bit of high speed steel tool material in either end and in fact that one was ground for clearance for some reason so I have to use shimming for most of my tooling in the four-way tool post which will take, it'll take half inch and the actual tool centre height it actually comes out at 0 0.570 nominally but anyway to avoid having to use a, a holding block I thought I'd just take a thin piece of mild plate which is three quarter by three quarter eighth and I'm going to cut a piece off two and a half inches long which is a suitable length you may see why later and I just want to put a slight v-cut in it so that instead of let's take one of these little guys here obviously I could put that in this holder and lock it down but if I want to do um, a quick change, although these have got a rather short sh shank, I must But the done. idea is just to have not only for this set, but others, that I can set one of these in a V slot, in a, in a V groove, and occasionally it might be useful. That's all it is. But the, the interesting thing here is that on my setup, because all I've got left nowadays is my drill press and the lathe, I need to find a way to cut the V. Well, way, way back when I made this cross drilling small jig, which I covered in one of the uh, earlier Gadgets and Gizmos series, that V was cut with this uh, rather handsome shell end mill and that goes straight in my spindle uh, it has got provision for a drawbar but I think if I remember rightly I can't find a drawbar I think I just uh, relied on friction and tapped it in with a copper hammer or a hide hammer and it did the job so what it means is that the workpiece of whatever size is going to have to be at 45 degrees and to make use of that cutter which incidentally has a very good side cut that's the big advantage here we've got face and side cut so I'm going to try and set this up by using the vertical slide I think we'll have to use the vertical slide scale vertically to do the cut honestly can't remember right now but uh, that's basically what we're going to do ever so simple <laughs> just make a little v-groove about a sixteenth of an inch deep in here when we've cut a piece off. Just a reminder of my rather basic four-way tool post. The two and a half inches I referred to is actually the dimension from that point roughly to this point, which means it includes two tightening screws, which is really all that's needed. The uh, depth, the depth this way from that point to the inner is a half inch. Well, <laughs> this is what I'm going to call a down and dirty quick fix. Uh, the piece of material that I'm working on, two and a half inches by three quarter by eighth, it's so darn small, I can't really set it up decently in a in a vise. Uh, because I've got to do everything in the lathe, I've got to find 45 degrees somewhere to cut the V. 
Uh, down there is the shell end mill in the spindle ready to go. So I've set up the, uh, in order to get the cross slide far enough across, I've reset the compound to 40. The vertical slide is true with the compound. Uh, the small piece of metal is set up as close to parallel as should be enough to matter with the vertical slide. And what I've got to do is crank up, or sorry, crank down the vertical slide because it's a freer movement. And I'm hoping that going with the cut is not going to be a problem. I'll have to take very light cuts. So like some of my other stuff, this is partly experimental. Uh, you can see how far up the lead screw is on the vertical slide. I've only just got enough travel. Now the other thing is how to control the axial movement. In other words, my advance up to the work, up to the uh, cutter. Now at this moment I've got another jury rigged set up. I've got the dial gauge across the uh, setting against the cross slide here. I've zeroed it and if I move the carriage or saddle, sometimes we call it saddle don't we? If I move that back you'll see the rotation of the dial gauge. So I'm going to have to, when I've got things running, advance up to the zero and just beyond just for the first cut. Each time I take a cut I will lock in, can't even get at it, I've got so much in the way. This little f fella down here, that's what locks my carriage. And this bar, oh, let's get it right, try and get over the top. This bar here is my cross slide stop which I can lock. Okay, that gives me an end stop. So in fact, if I push that in now and tighten it up, that should control the cross slide. You won't be able to see till I move the camera because I don't know whether I can get enough light on this. The uh, first tooth of the cutter is just touching the scribe mark that I've got which is not centered, it's to the edge uh, because I don't need the V too far out from the center of the uh, cross slide, sorry the uh, tool post which I've taken out. Anyway I'm going to try and move the camera and set it up and then <laughs> we're going to see what happens. Uh, you never know. When I, when I did the V-cuts in my large pieces of work, the uh, cross drilling jigs, to be honest I quite forget how I set it up. It may be I had something, some other fitting in my old place 20 plus years ago, but they were decent sized pieces anyway. This small piece is a bit of a problem. Let's see what we can do. Alright, well here goes nothing. Let's get a bit of oil around the place. I'm going to take a really light cut, probably about maybe just five thou and see what happens. I've never tried to mount a small piece like this on here. Uh, see what happens. It's going to back off a tiny bit. Then I'm going to come in about five thou, lock the carriage and then we'll work on the vertical slide.
And that's about as far down. I'm just going to unlock and come back. It's about as far as I can get the cross slide down. If the cut doesn't quite finish, I'll just shorten it slightly. <laughs> this will probably make experienced old machinists shudder to see the way I'm doing this. Well, first of all, I've got to bring the I've got to bring the uh, vertical slide back up. I'm really pushing the envelope here. I've got no milling machine left at all. I sold all my other stuff. I had one machine that would have done this easily. Let's see what we got. Well, there's enough light to see anything there. Get my trusty pointer. There is the first cut just up there. Now although this is only eighth bar I only need to go in about sixteenth and I'm also stuck with clearance on this top clamp too which is only just nipping the corner so what we'll do here is I'm just going to take a check alright so we'll back off bring this back up I'll take another cut. Right, let's have a slathering of oil. Let's try and keep some oil on these flutes here. All right, second time round, here goes nothing. So I'm going to bring this up, take a slightly bigger cut this time, see what we can get away with. This is fun, isn't it? It's reset my zero when I think about it. Back off. Bring the cross the uh, vertical slide table back up. This is probably about as good as the novice amateur. Not that I've done much machine work for quite some time. And clean this up again. Of course, this is round the back, I can hardly see what I'm doing. Oh, there's an embryonic cut, isn't it? It's about all you can call it. Right, I'm going to take one or two more cuts and then uh, see where we go from there. Too much of this will get boring. Incidentally, with this rotation, that way and the uh, vertical slide going down it's the opposite I forget the term now if we were climb milling we'd be going against the cutter rotation and so we're doing the opposite I've got one or two other small mills actually but this uh, shell mill is so robust and it served me very well in the past that's why I'm using it again all right we'll come back to this when I got a bit further I just zoomed in a bit here. I've made another two or three light passes. I'm not taking a huge cut. Unfortunately, because the lead screw on the vertical slide is a bit tight, it's very difficult to keep a really constant feed. But we're getting a cut, and you can see it at the moment. Um, we're down not all that far, actually, but the width of the cut is what matters from the usefulness point of view. And I've also got a oil drip just coming onto the tool cutting face, so uh, that should help a little bit. We'll just take another cut, see where we got to.
swing set zero. Let's come back a little bit there. Now before I come up, I'm just going to check with a mirror. It's a very awkward situation to get at this one. I find a flashlight and a mirror is about the only way I can really I haven't even bothered to calculate the geometry and the depth. This is purely by eye. As I said, this is a down and dirty down and dirty little job, this one. Uh, well, we're not halfway down, but the width of that V-groove is looking almost as much as I need. So I'm going to take one more pass, I think, and then we'll probably call it a day. I'm going to call that it. Uh, I've got enough width of V there to cope with the small tooling that I might be using for a boring bar or anything else I want to put in that's round come to that. I'm also limited by the uh, clearance on that, uh, oh it's out of frame now, the top clamp that was getting within a very small space of the cutter. So I'm going to call that it. Right, the uh, top end here is where the cutter didn't quite reach. So I shall probably remove about an eighth of an inch of that. Uh, otherwise not too bad. Bear in mind this is only a, a V piece to go in the tool post. There's nothing very critical about it. Now if I try and get, we're not quite halfway down. Alright, well I'm hoping you can see the V there. Because I can't see it very easily on the viewing, viewing screen. Anyway, that's pretty much all I intended to do. And I say it's offset because the material this side will hang out from the tool post. And this is set up for approximately the mid area where the tightening screws come down. So there it is. Fiddly tiddly little piece, jury rigged, down a dirty bit of machining. The only way that I could really find to set it up might give everybody a headache thinking what the heck was he doing? But anyway I got a result. Thought I'd show it to you just for, for a bit of fun. There's usually a way to do things even if it's a bit weird.